This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen. I'm the president of World Ministries International. And I want to welcome you to the Warning Television Program. We're coming from our office in Stanwood, Washington, USA. So wherever you're watching me throughout the United States or around the world and Kenya, welcome. Today I have a bishop from Kenya, Bishop Dr. Jeffrey Jaguna. He's an ordained minister in the Deliverance Church where he is honored to serve in the D. CC executive team. He is the founding pastor of the Deliverance Church, Langada, where he currently serves as a senior pastor. He is a board member of FTT, AfriServe, which focuses on the unreached, unchurched people groups of Kenya. He is the East Africa Regional Coordinator, Movements of African Initiatives. Man, this is a continental movement that collaborates and coordinates strategic mission initiatives across Africa. He is currently appointed to the E21 leadership forum, which follows up on the SUSA mandate. He is also the vice chairman, Global Leadership Summit, the Kenya chairman, Outback Africa, the chairman, Global Spears, Kenya, and member of the National Advisory Board of Love, Inc., Kenya. So you can see, this is a busy guy. Dr. Jaguna holds a diploma in Bible and Theology from Free Gospel Bible Institute near Pittsburgh, uh, USA, a Bachelor's of Arts in Bible from Central Bible College, Springfield, Missouri, a Master's degree in Christian Ministry and Leadership from the International Leadership University, formerly NIST, in Nairobi, Kenya, and doctorate degree from Asbury Theological Seminary, Lexington, Kentucky, USA, whose track was advanced leadership in biblical preaching. Dr. Jaguna is committed to the development of leaders who will make a positive contribution to the transformation of society. He travels across Kenya holding leadership development seminars, which he also hosts at the Deliverance Church in Langada. He is happily married to Elizabeth, and God has blessed them with four adult children who have the testimony of Christ living within them. Their son and three daughters have their own families. As of now, Dr. Jaguna has six grandchildren. Now, we want to talk today, when I get in a moment to introduce him to you, I want to talk today on the church's role in nations to influence governments. I want to talk on the church needs to have the courage, the boldness, the faith to confront an antichrist, secular, humanistic society advanced by pro-abortion and LGBT promoters. And if we can get to it, we're going to talk a little bit about the seven mountains or gates that influence civilization. One is government, two is media, three is arts and entertainment, four is business, five is education, six is religion, and seven is family. Understand? Some, Psalm 72, 19, it tells us that the purpose of God through His church is to reveal His glory over all the earth. God's glory. Mm -hmm. It's done through the church. If there's going to be peace and prosperity in the nation or nations, it's going to have to be through the church. You can pray all you want. Jesus is not coming out of heaven to do our responsibility. When He ascended, He said, go and make disciples. First, tarry, so you have the power, mm -hmm. my Holy Spirit, for you to represent me in my name with power and authority. Genesis 1, 26 and 28, Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Luke 19, 13, Matthew 5, 13, God tells Christians, take dominion, subdue, be salt, mm -hmm. occupy, and make disciples of the inhabitants of the earth. So we have a responsibility. In heaven, the government of God rules and there is peace. On earth, Satan rules through evil men and Christians are at war. We are his ambassadors. If there's going to be peace in the nations and prosperity, it's going to be because the church makes disciples. We have a God-given responsibility to be salt, to influence, to bring, uh, if we want to say, dominion, to influence. Salvation, healing, and deliverance. We have to do our job. So let's meet Bishop Jaguna right now. He's been a personal friend of mine for over 30 years. I've preached for him uh, in, in his churches, meaning the first one when he was under a tent in the 1980s, early 1990s, and then he moved to a, a great uh, church building where I've also spoke there. Bishop Jaguna, welcome back to the Warning Television Program. Well, I'm so glad to be back. 
and especially to be visiting my daughter who don't live too far from here. That's right. Yeah. Uh, your daughter is also a friend of my wife. Wow. And uh, she's, a, she's a wonderful lady. Thank you. Her Thank name you. is Jane. Yes. But uh, we want to talk, just like I shared, yeah. on the church's role in the nations to influence governments. Right. Uh, share a little bit on that. I know you have a burden, you have a heart, the same way I do on this. Right. It is my persuasion, according to the, what the Word of God tells us about discipleship. We are sent to the nations to go and preach the gospel, to disciple people. And I believe that if every uh, Christian community in all the nations of the world would take it as, as a responsibility or mandate from God, that we are not just going to disciple the people that we are pastoring, but we're going to focus on, on, on those who are doing the governance to remind them that, the, that what they have is a responsibility at a God, and God holds them uh, as, the, as, as the, the, the people. The citizen needs to hold their leaders accountable. Accountable. But in terms of answerability, every person who is president or governor, whoever they are, they, if they abuse power to, to, to be able to disadvantage uh, those people that they rule over, then I believe that they are, they are going to be, pun God himself will hold them accountable for that. You know, I, I, I talk about a 4R vision. In other words, yeah. restoration of the church. I yes. believe we're supposed to restore the church yes. to the mission and method of the way Jesus and the apostles led it. Right. Two, reconciliation between ethnic leaders and churches. Right. Three, revive the church to expand kingdom influence. That's right. And four, reformation of society and the discipling of nations. Yes. That is our responsibility. It's our responsibility. But you do realize that many, uh, many pastors don't consider that as a responsibility. Uh, they, they think that they just have to worry about the number of people they are overseeing within a certain community. And I've spoken to pastors, I'm so shocked, who who really don't think they have any responsibility in terms of uh, addressing politicians, addressing uh, the community leaders. And it's like they, uh, they live in a secluded kind of setup to where they say, it is their business out there, my business is here. But I, I don't believe that is right. I don't understand that thinking. Yeah. I, I know you're correct because I run into it all over the place. This is it. But it, it, it's certainly not scriptural. No. Jesus is not coming out of heaven no matter how much you pray to fix your nation. No. He no. gave you that responsibility. He gave, you responsibility. he gave you that to be his ambassador. And if you want yeah. peace and prosperity, disciple the nation. Disciple this nation. And, and one of the things I, I get concerned about, uh, even from the state, uh, you know, coming from, from Africa and coming from the nation of Kenya, one of the things I've been doing on a regular basis, like I told you before, I do have a, a TV program that lands. 30 minutes every Monday evening yes. in prime time between 8.30 and 9. And what I do is to, to observe what is what's been reported in the public press, both print and electronic. And I bring and I respond to what I call a biblical perspective. Good. And I'm not shy to address anything, uh, whether it's about corruption or whether there is. And I keep saying, even right now, that if we are going to transform communities, the solution is one, to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Totally. That is going to introduce new values, is going to introduce the fear of God to the people, uh, because uh, the, the Bible says righteousness exhorteth a nation, uh, but sin is a reproach to any people. That's Proverbs 14, 34. And therefore, if a community, I usually say you can move it uh, from nation to communities to even families to even individuals. Righteousness will exhort any person. It will exhort a family. Righteousness will exhort a community, a nation. But sin will bring reproach to any person, any family, any community, any nation. I think, Bishop, all around the world, yeah. if, if leaders... Christian leaders, uh, church members really understand yeah. 
the situation in the world and their scriptures, yes. more people right now, more Christians are dying and yes. being persecuted. Yeah. I'm talking about dying by persecution yes. than all the generations combined. Wow. Because of evil leadership in evil governments. Yes. Every person in the room, yeah. I believe, yeah. I was in, in, in Korea, World Holy Spirit Conference. I said every person in this room yeah. knows that persecution right now is increasing in all nations because right. of weak leadership. Weak leadership. And we must... And wicked leadership. Yes, we yes. must make disciples yes. if we want to bring peace and prosperity yeah. to Korea. Well, mm -hmm. we must make disciples if we want peace and prosperity in Kenya, in the United States. I'm going to Colombia where the cartels rule. Yeah. If we want to change the cartels' yeah. leadership from yeah. killing people, from corruption, mm -hmm. from prostitution, it's up to the church. But you see, the, the, the why, why Korea is a very distinct country. And when I went there, I was very impressed. Yes. Uh, I've been telling uh, some of my colleagues and ministers in the country of Kenya, if we are going to change Kenya as a nation, yes. one of the things we need to do is to mobilize the church to prayer. Yes. Because what has made South Korea what it is, is the commitment to prayer and, and discipleship in a very special way. Uh, David Yogi Cho, yeah. for, for as long as I know, has been reputed to have uh, like the largest church in the world. Yes. Now, of course, he's elderly and he has already had it over. But I, when I went there and I saw the magnitude of that church, it's mind boggling. You know, it's 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 really huge. But but I came to also discover that in South in South Korea the deacons in the Presbyterian Church and the Methodist Church and even in the Methodist Churches are people who are government uh, cabinet ministers. Yes. And that is why uh, we know that corruption is not tolerated. It doesn't matter what is your rank. If you are charged for corruption, then you're rocked up. Yeah. And it's because of the, 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 the commitment to not tolerate corruption has a Christian value. It is something that has been advanced for people from a standpoint of faith. And that is what should happen everywhere. Because right. there are so many people suffering. And when sometimes I observe what goes on in, in our country, uh, I am uh, a kind of person that most politicians would, would consider that I'm their enemy, but I'm not their enemy. What I usually say is that you are elected by the people. Yes, yes. And, and, and when you are elected the, by, by the people to represent them, you are not just supposed to represent them uh, there, but you are supposed to, to carry their concerns with you. And, uh, but I've discovered many, many uh, politicians, when they get into a place of power, within the period of the time in which they are occupying, they are not worried about their electorates. Right. They are worried about ensuring that they have bought a property there, they have bought this, they've done what, until election time. Then they will come back to the same people. Yes. And I refuse, and I tell people, I refuse to be a victim yes. of poor leadership. Yes. I will speak it out, I will, I will say what I have to say, because I believe, especially from a, as a, from a church leadership perspective, there is no sense in people who are leading churches uh, and, they, they, and they just carry these titles, but they also lament, like everybody else, and they don't know what to do, as if they are held captive. Yes. Uh, or in some of a bondage by people who are within the political leadership. If, if church leaders were holding to account and talking boldly uh, to the political leaders, I believe there is a change that can be seen. Well, you're totally correct. Yeah. But we must get the church. There has to be a revival in the church. A revival in the church, right. Because there is corruption in the church. Now, I could, I could give you examples in every nation I go to. Yes. Every nation. Yes. I could, where God has used me to expose adultery, thievery. I'm talking about by bishops yes. in the church. Yeah. And then we got some churches that are involved, some church leaders in tribalism. Right. And in, in, in ethnic problems. Right. And if we don't clean up the corruption, if we don't make sure that every bishop understands our God-given responsibility is we are actually the same body. Yes. And we come from the same tribe, the yeah. kingdom of God. 
That's and right. forget looking at color of skin and forget looking at tribe. Yeah. You vote for the best man or woman that would represent the values it. of Jesus Christ. The values Christ, of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God. That is what I say. If you had a brother or a sister who was studying for an electoral, uh, an electoral position and that person was known to advance a wicked agenda, an anti-Christ agenda, they should never get their, your vote. You're right. Because even if they were, they were your own blood brother, you can say no. I'll give it to somebody who can represent the values I stand for. Totally. And, and that's, that's the way it should be. And I look at our country, uh, like some of the situations we have had to go through as a nation, I say if the church had remained true to its virtues, we would have probably even evaded some of the crises that we went to because we would have not allowed politicians to divide us along tribal lines. So that now I, I have to, I can only support somebody because they, I'm, I'm in their tribe. Uh, wh what about having a position to where what guides our determination for a vote is a person who can go to uh, be able to support what the church stands for? I totally agree. Yeah. You know, you and I, you and I, Bishop, I know in, in my family, yeah. I have an Italian son-in-law, yeah. Chinese aunt. Yeah. I have an African-American daughter. Yeah. I have a Malaysian uh, cousin. Yeah. And uh, now I have an, an African wife. Right. My, my first former wife died. Yeah. And three years later, God gave me another wife. Yes. Who is African? I am not yeah. tribalistic. Yeah. You are not I'm tribalistic. Not. You, have, you have two son-in-laws that are white. I know. Americans. <laughs> Americans. White Americans. So I mean, uh, <laughs> this is... my daughter. Yeah. If a person nine. says, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm not... I don't have an ethnic problem. Uh, ask yourself, would you let your son and daughter marry somebody from another tr another country? But do you know what shocked me one time? And I, there's a case in which there's a certain young man in our country who wanted to marry this particular girl from another community. And unfortunately, the parents refused. Yes. And I tried to tell them, have you tried to... Have you tried to use strategies to where you can get uh, maybe the pastor or somebody to talk to this person? Because it's completely, it's completely unscriptural. Yes. That you can deny someone to marry, uh, your daughter to be married by somebody else who is a believer. Yes. Simply because they're not the same tribe. Right, right, right. I mean, in heaven, you know, we will be all gathered from all <laughs> tribes, from all nations. From how? Why should we feel to practice that here? Totally, totally. If you have a problem on earth, you're going to have a problem in heaven. Right. You better make sure you get to heaven. And, and I've come to discover, <laughs> because I've traveled to this country pretty much, that in most situations, churches that embrace the diversity aspect flourish. If a church is wanting to just be uh, so kind of, uh, you know, only ensure that they're, they're going to accommodate, uh, you know, maybe just this cara or this cara, those churches remain, remain uh, to some degree uh, weak. Yes. But a church that opens its doors for diversity, they just flourish. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, I gave a word to President Moy uh, clear back in uh, June 4 and June uh, 18, 1992. Yes. And uh, uh, there was five bullet points f for the nation. Yeah. You know, one, God is going to judge this nation. Two, a spirit of rebellion sweeping the nation, followed by fighting. Three, a spirit of drought sweeping the nation, followed by famine. Four, a spirit of Islam sweeping the nation, followed by riots. Five, finally, if the Christians, especially the pastors of the nation, don't repent of their hypocrisy, start to develop a relationship with God, then the Christians will lose their religious freedom. If you fear God, you must have a change of heart, develop a true relationship with Him. You must be born again. Yes. If you fail to hearken to this warning, there will be fighting, even family against family. There will be famine. You will be persecuted by another religious group. The nation will lose its religious freedom, and the nation will not fully recover until Jesus returns. Now, if you read that entire prophecy, it goes into corruption of the church, yeah. corruption of, of people, mm. and uh, it, it calls for a repentance. Repentance, In other yes. words, 
change of heart. A change of heart. And, and the church must lead a repentance. Now, this was given in Kenya, and they're on their fifth and final point. Yeah. You know that I've met with every regime that's yeah. come into office. Right. Every regime talking about this prophecy. Yes. Because it's coming to pass. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, what, we, what we need, you know, Cyrus, Donald Trump, let's get back to America. Yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah. It's like a Cyrus. Yes. And in other words, he's given a proclamation. Mm. Cyrus gave a proclamation to rebuild the wall. Yeah. And uh, But it took 22.7 years. Don mm. Cyrus was long off the regime. It took four regimes mm. until the uh, people of Israel united and accomplished it. Yeah. Okay. Donald Trump is great. He's helped us preserve uh, uh, America. They were trying to take us into a new world order, and he's backing the church. But Donald Trump is not the savior. The church must recognize yeah. that we must lead a revival. You're we right. must repent for right. abortion, mm -hmm. homosexuality. Right. Four sins bring judgment on a nation. Yeah. Uh, idolatry. Yes. Immorality, killing yeah. the innocent, and dividing the land of Israel. Right. If we don't start calling sin, sin, homosexuality, mm -hmm. and other types of sin, uh, no matter about Donald Trump, we are finally going to lose our nation. Yeah. We, the church has to rise up That's and right. protect and preserve a nation. Uh, as, Bishop? We are, as we are talking now, uh, in Kenya, we have been fighting. Uh, right now, there are, there are matters that have been on this in, the, in the court. There's a matter that is going to the Supreme Court. Uh, they, uh, we, we are so happy. That recently, before I traveled on this trip, we had a ruling that favored the position of the church and it was such a blessing. Wow. Where uh, the, the, the court ruled against an intention of allowing the atheist to, re, to, be, uh, to, to, you know, to, to be registered yes. as an organization. Okay. Uh, uh, that, that I think could still be pending, but there's one that was ruled uh, and that was uh, somebody who wanted you know, homosexuality not to be considered as a criminal offense. Yes, yes. Uh, and this was being pushed by the LGBT, the, the lesbian uh, movement. And for some reason, we came to discover, since the, the, these matters go to court, there are organizations from the Western world that fund them to get lawyers to stand in court to advance those agendas. Probably George Soros. But you see, recently we, 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 a ruling was done, and there was even an international, I think there was a, an international court where they were unanimous to say that homosexuality is not a human right because it's a violation of what is natural. Amen. Amen. And that is the truth. Yes. So if, 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 if a country condemns uh, that practice, they are not violating any right of anybody. That's right. Because we, we have to, to understand it is the God who created us the way we are. It is God who has said that a marriage union should be between a man and a woman. So when an idea comes to think that a man and a man can go together and be joined, or a woman and another woman, it violates what God order is, and it must be condemned. Well, I totally agree. Yeah. In this prophecy, uh, fourth paragraph down, it said, many, many people today who call themselves Christians no longer help to preserve the nation. They lie, cheat, steal, fornicate, commit adultery, have abortions, live in homosexuality, slander, curse, gossip, and commit every sort of evil and uncleanliness the heart can imagine. Christians as they say, praise the Lord, shake your hand like Judas kissing Jesus, then stab you in the back by accusing you falsely. Yeah. You know, I love Kenya. I've lived in Kenya since 1987. Right. I moved back to America in 95, but I still have offices there yes. this day. I know. And I, I've married a Kenyan. Yeah. And I love Kenya. Yes. But what I'm reading here also applies to America. Right. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, you must understand that what we are doing in America we must, we must not just rely on Donald Trump. Thank God he's there. He's been a good buffer. But if Donald Trump leaves because the other side, sheer hatred, sheer demonic hatred against real born-again Christians right now, they're going to try anything to remove him, whether it's impeachment, whether it's assassination, whether it's by voting. But ladies and gentlemen, if the other side wins, 
persecution like you've never seen is coming on the church. We must, we must, we must start calling sin, sin. Homosexuality is sin. We must call it. Yeah. You know, I'm going to hopefully be meeting with Trump and I'm going to say, Mr. President, you yeah. must call homosexuality sin. Right. Yes, you can, you can do what you want. We have that freedom, but it is still called sin. It is sin. And I must say that as a Christian. Now, he can say that. He says he's a Christian. He and can he say, be, he, he can call it sin. That. He's going to get, take a political hit. But if we're going to preserve America, we must overturn the laws that bring judgment on a nation, and homosexuality is one of them. You know, we felt so proud of uh, our president, uh, His Excellency uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, when they stood in this common podium with the president, uh, the former president of this country, Barack Obama. Yes. And our president did something that was celebrated as far as Australia and all the Christian community. We, 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 we really felt really, really thankful to God that he was able in sharing the same platform to say that the homosexuality is not an issue that we it should be, we can even discuss in Kenya. He said, if, if there's a value we can all share with America, that is homosexuality. I'll tell you it what, I was not, proud of your president it too. It is not anything that, you know, and it is, it's not an issue. And since he did that, that has become a very great support because for, uh, for a while, the people, the homosexuals became very silent. But recently they have been trying to come to use, through, uh, to go through the court systems to see whether the court can rule in their favor. But recently, a uh, ruling in a high court was so favorable. And we thank God for the Christian, Kenya Christian Professionals Forum. Th that's a body that uh, goes to court, you know, professionals that go to court to be able to defend the interest of the church. Amen. And we need, they need support from all church leaders. They need support. Right now, there is a matter that is going to the Supreme Court, but I believe the church should all come together and support and come up with. If we need to hire uh, some of these, uh, you know, see, you know, some of these senior counsel people who can be able to stand and argue matters, because we cannot allow secular humanists. We cannot allow people who despise Christ to be able to take a center state to be the influencers of the nation. The church should influence the nation. Amen. You know, you continue to pray for a bishop, continue to pray for me, yeah. pray for Kenya, pray for the United States, that yeah. we can turn the laws back and call sin for what it is. It is sin. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, Bishop and I are going to be trying to, working together to, to start a Kenya apostolic uh, coalition because it's up to the church to bring peace and prosperity to any nation, including Kenya. Do what you can to help us. This program is entirely, entirely viewer supported. We do need your help to stay on your local television station, 360-629-5248, 360-629-5248. May God richly, richly bless you. Amen.